Hello and welcome everyone to my channel. Uh, today in this video I'm going to talk about ramp function, uh, which is basically a very, very useful uh, function uh, in real projects. So uh, before going uh, through ramp function and uh, starting the programming aspects of that, let me give you a very short and simple introduction about RAM functions. Why we need to use this function in uh, real projects. So let me draw a very simple curve here. Okay, it's so beautiful. Okay, so now imagine um, an, oper an operator wants to increase the set point uh, or, the, or uh, the, the operator wants to change the speed of a motor in a, in a real plant. Okay, so uh, the motor is stopped right now, so the speed is, of course, zero. Let me write it here. Okay. And the operator wants to increase the speed of the motor to 50% of its nominal speed. So just imagine, it's, it's just an example. So our set point which is basically this curve here uh, is increased 50%. Okay, so just let me write here to make it so beautiful. Okay, so this, the set point wants to increase from 0 to 50%. Okay, and let me complete it. Sorry for that. That's good. So the set point is in percent. So we want to increase uh, the speed of motor from 0 to 50. So what is preferred in a real project and industries is to actually ramp the set point. We cannot directly uh, actually uh, imply the set, set point to the actuator because of the mechanical limitations and, and many other factors. So we need to wrap the set point. So what it means is to actually increase the set point to our desired value with a rate, not instantly. So, for example, we need to uh, define a rate for increasing the speed from 0 to 50. So, the rate could be 10% per second, for example. It's, it's just an example. So, we define a, ra we define a rate for increasing the set point instead of increasing the set point from 0 to 50 instantly, which is not actually uh, preferred in a real project. So um, it's it's a very very basic concept of ramp function. So now uh, I'm going to uh, actually uh, to the programming aspects of this ramp function and uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, so now let's uh, take a look into the. Uh, actually, the programming aspects of the RAM function. Okay, let's uh, create a network here. Let's name it RAM function. So, here in instructions, uh, let's search to find RAM function. Okay, there it is. So because it's the function block, so we need to define an instance for it. So here, uh, I just click on OK, so it automatically create a 
an instance for this function block. You can see here it's the DB1, which is the uh, this function block instance. Okay, so it's what RAM function looks like. So it has input and output here. So uh, I'm just because it has a very, very, very different levels which we can go through each one and you know give give many many examples. I will be talking about just the basic aspects of RAM function. So okay, here let's take a look at its data block. As you can see, there are many, 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 many inputs and outputs and all the static values which can be defined. Just um, let's keep it basic and uh, just take a look at what this function can do. For testing this function here, uh, we use a Teoportal simulator to, to see what we can do with it. But basically, let's uh, first uh, let's define some uh, variables here. So for the input, uh, actually input is our target value. So for example, it's not your set point, it's 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 the target value. For example, remember our uh, example, we want to go from 0 to 50%. So for example, the input or our desired value or our target value is 50. So we can just, let's, let's define uh, and of 0, okay, perfect. Uh, okay, let's name it target value. Perfect. Okay, it's it's our target value, and the output is actually our sub point. Mm -hmm. So for let's name it set. Or we can say round subpoint. Round subpoint. So we have target value and the round subpoint. Okay, so what we need here is a reason which is initialize this uh, round function. Okay, let's let's say um, ten, zero, nice. So yeah, let's take a look at its data block. So as I as I told you, we need to define a rate for our increase and decrease. Let's imagine we want to control the speed of motor. Uh, so basically, uh, our upper limits could be. 100, 100, or which can be 100 percent. You see, it's it's the maximum speed of a motor, and the lower limit is zero. So basically, we are the fear. We need to define these two values here, and also this positive rising rate and positive falling rate. So here, what is defined is 10, which means 10 unit per second. We can start with these values, but then later we can we can change it to see how it's working. Okay, let's again um, let's work with the simulator to see what this. to be m dot four m dot four perfect okay let's compile the load this to the simulator So 
uh, as you see, uh, I entered the target value to 100. And as you see, the set point starts from 0 to, to that target value. Let's see. Let me bring it here. Just give me a second. Okay. Uh, for example, our target value. We want to we want to stop the model. We just insert zero, which is zero percent or stop. Okay. So when we apply this uh, value to the to the system, as you see that the set point or the output is increasing with a rate to zero. It didn't change instantly. And it's exactly one minute. The set point should be around because of the, as, as I told you, because of the mechanical limitation, because we don't want to stress our mechanical structure. So perfect. So uh, we can change a little bit these things here. So if we change this, right here which we can basically do it in the simulator itself or here it doesn't matter mm, we can we can see actually what it kind of will look like so the simulator I bring the RAM function here so let me make it bigger Okay, so like I want to change the positive rising rate. Okay. Currently it's 10. Imagine I want to change it to 1. So it's going to be 1 unit per second. So if I want to now, if I change the target value to imagine 30. So it takes 30 seconds to go from 0 to 30 percent. So it's it's because we changed the rate to one unit per second. So it's basically takes 30 seconds to, to reach this value. So it's very easy. Now also uh, we can change the falling rate as well. Okay, count is it's 10, we can change it to 5 and now you see if I change the target value to 0 it takes 6 sec seconds actually to go from 30 to 0 because it's 5 units per second or 5 person per second so it takes uh, 6 seconds to go from 30 to 0 uh, there are um, some outputs here as you can see which is that which, which can indicate if the positive and or, or, the, or the rising or the falling is activated which you can use it in your program um, so the, 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 as I told you, there are many, many features because as you can see, there are many, many uh, variables here, but I, I will discuss the most important one. You can go through it, you can, you can uh, actually uh, work with this function by yourself and um, examine this function with, with, in, in different situations. Uh, and if you have any question, uh, write it in the comment section. I will answer to all of them. If you like this video and if you like to uh, actually see more topics in my channel, so just subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you like it, so please like this video because it motivates me to upload more and more videos on this course many many topics in Tiaprodal. It's it's just a beginning. Um, thank you so much. Have a good day.